Greetings, my fellow servants of the God Emperor of Mankind. It is the Ash Heritor, and welcome back to Rogue Parader. Whatever you wish. Yeah, whatever I wish. Here we are in the Shattered Sanctum Refuge, whatever you have it, of the, uh, what is it, Orac 5? Um, the former stronghold of the House Orcelio Navigator line. Uh, it is, uh, it has been redecorated with cherry juice and uh, cherry juice filled crash test dummies. Uh, it's fine. Let's not worry too much about it. Let's uh, let's leave, actually. Reason why I'm not starting the episode on the void ship deck is because of... Uh, okay, I did drop all of these. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to take them. I'm, I'm just going to take them with me in case they're useful somewhere Keep else. Keep your wits about you. So, uh, the reason why we're not, uh, starting on the Void Ship is because, uh, there might be some sort of, like, cinematic or something when getting onto the Void Ship, and I didn't want to have to, uh, miss that while I'm doing my intro, or interrupt my intro. Who the... I, I don't know how this is gonna go, so we're just gonna see what happens here. So, uh, yeah, if you're enjoying this series, drop this video a like, and, uh, we will continue on. I look forward to this, of basically just playing all of these episodes back to back. <laughs> Uh, at the time of recording here, the second episode was released yesterday, so um, to those of you who have left comments on previous episodes, I have not read them yet. My apologies, but uh, I, I want to play this game, and I have time to do so right now, so it's uh, it's definitely caught my attention in a uh, very good way. So let's uh, let's proceed onwards. We're at 100 percent. Can we uh, can we go? Can we do it? There we go. Yeah, see, I knew there would be a cutscene. That's so cool. Lord Captain, Lady Navigator, welcome aboard. The Sanctum Novice has been prepared for the communion ritual, but the Lady Navigator wishes to rest in her quarters first. Your heart starts beating furiously, your breaths come short and choppy, and your fingertips tingle unpleasantly. You notice that Vigdis is shivering slightly, and the crew are glancing around in puzzlement, searching for the source of this sudden wave of unease. Oh, let me guess, it's probably the Navigator. Without even looking at the Voxcaster, Cassia waves her away. First, I wish to speak with the rogue trader. Leave us. Of course. When you are ready for the ritual, please let me know. <laughs> Who's that? It's just a... I can't tell. I think... I don't know who that is, actually. Cassia sweeps her pensive gaze over Vigdis, then lowers her lashes slightly, turns to you. I don't want to speak to you, no. <laughs> what do you wish to speak about? Before I begin the ritual, I wish to look once again into the eyes of the woman whose fame is so great it managed to penetrate the impregnable walls of Hirak V long before we ever met. It truly is you, Cyrene von Valantius, the person the whole Expanse and Calictus sector are talking about, and now a rogue traitor as well. Do you have me confused with my predecessor? After a few seconds' hesitation, Cassia lets out a small exhale and then raises her pointed chin. I have not yet thanked you for saving me on the station. My thoughts were clouded with so much mournful ash when Theobald's heart stopped, but you acted honorably and did not exploit me in my wretched position, and for that I am immeasurably grateful. I am also deeply grateful that you saved my servants, especially my valet, Uwe, served on the station for more than five years, much longer than any who preceded him. He knows how to properly attend to me during journeys through the Immaterium, and what to serve me for breakfast. His presence also envelops me in a cloak of amber. Okay. He, he, he had his tongue removed, right? But at least he can serve you breakfast. Okay, I really don't know what to make of Cassia here. But now, Cassia throws back her shoulders. I'm ready to go to the Sanctum Navis and perform the sacred rites. I require brushes, canvas, and the best paints you have on board. But no red. Why do you refuse red paint? Cassia gestures towards the servant beside her. 
Uve will give his blood before the ritual. As always. Did what? <laughs> uh, I'm, am I? I'm regretting bringing you on board. Why are you asking for these items? Now is not the time to indulge in painting. We're asking questions, the answers to which you cannot comprehend. Perhaps I may explain it all to you at a later time, but now our time is too precious to waste. As a navigator of House Orselio, I give you my word that without canvas and paint we have little hope of a smooth journey through the warp. I have no reason to lie. Sounds like somebody who has a reason to lie would say. But tell me more about what the ritual entails. I doubt the uninitiated could understand the mysteries of navigation, but I shall try to explain the essence of it. I must merge my mind and will with the machine spirit of the ship, so that I become one with the vessel. Cassia lifts a lock of hair back from, uh, from the back of her neck, revealing gilded implant ports. After that, I use the House Orselio ritual, which I am loath to reveal to you, to free my mind from all errant thoughts, and then... Then it is time for me to open my third eye and peer into the depths of the warp itself. Among the nightmarish visions, mirages, and creatures of the abyss, only the light of the Emperor is the truth that will lead me from star to star, from system to system. Oh, the light, the guiding thread, so fine it can slip from one's grasp at any moment. Cassia unfurls her hand as though dropping something. But you have nothing to worry about. The navigators of House Orselia will never lose their course. Very, um... Ludwig from Bloodborne with a thread of light. I shall ensure that all the necessary supplies are delivered to the Sanctum Navis. Yeah, we'll just... we'll humor her. Cassia nods and thanks. I shall take my leave of you for the duration of the rite. I ask that you do not follow me. If you can survive the gaze of my warp eye when it is opened. Yeah, I know. Well... Now we have a navigator. Cool stuff. Oh, who's coming up? Big this. Lord Captain, I will oversee the open channel between the Lady Navigator and the bridge, and may the Emperor's light help us all. So. We're back in space. Voxcaster in the Sanctum Navis picks up the susurration of clothes, pious chanting, and the metallic clicking of implants. Then the serene voice of the Lady Navigator breaks the ritual. Initiating communion ritual. Come here, Uwe. The exultant ring of metal freed from its scabbard. The low sob of the servant. The rhythmic drip of fluid on canvas. The faint whisper of the brush. Go. Footsteps hurrying away. Jesus Christ! I mean, God Emperor. This is... this is... messed up. I see. Violet vortexes lashing an ocean with a million flails, and umber shadows spinning over the surface in a fiery dance. The storm rising above foaming waters, armadas drowning in fog. The path from one end to the other cannot be seen. And here... Beyond the wall of glass, a daughter, forsaken by her father, yearns for her brother. And the sun's pale disk goes in tireless pursuit of her? No, of me. Its frozen rays lie, that spring is here. The light is deadened. The great ruler is gone. Boxmaster recoils at Cassia's words and accidentally snaps one of the cogitator levers. The panel beneath her fingers emits sparks, and the box caster falls silent. She quickly flips a series of switches and bows guiltily. My apologies for cutting off the broadcast, Lord Commander. I have never heard the warp speaking through a navigator before. The connection is restored now. It will not happen again. Uh, no. No need to do undo punishments. Cassia, are you alright in there? Soul-shredding screams drown out the Vox transmission. The servants in the Sanctum Navis are howling and shrieking like wild beasts, moaning in pain, their throats raw from strain, and then sudden silence. The dull thud of 
dropping bodies proclaims their fate. God damn it. It appears the servants were part of the Lady's Navigator's rites, as it was for her predecessor. I will arrange for the bodies to be removed from the Sanctum Navis after the ritual, or what is left of them. Does this happen every time we jump into the warp? Rogue Trader, I fear I have unfortunate news. Endless blackness has spread across the canvas, dividing what should or dividing what should be whole in two, and my sight cannot glimpse the light of the Emperor as clearly as before. I cannot turn around. My brush only draws me forward. The way is blocked. Is she talking about the Cicatrix Maledictum? Is this happening concurrently to... Is this kind of implying that this just happened? Could be something else. Could be another warp storm. But dividing what was whole in two kind of implies the galaxy being divided in two by the Cicatrix Maledictum. Which, if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, that's fine. Um, the Cicatrix Maledictum is basically... An extension of the Eye of Terror, which is a colossal warp storm that is basically a portal into the warp itself. There are a couple of these throughout the galaxies. There's, uh, throughout the galaxy, singular. There is, uh, the, the most, two notable ones are the Eye of Terror and the Maelstrom. The Eye of Terror is by far the biggest. Um, and... It's a giant red nebula appearing in real space that you should not look at ever. It's bad. Um... It is a gaping wound in the galaxy. But worse, the ritual conducted by, I believe it was Abaddon, um, more or less caused an extension of this to shoot across the galaxy, basically cutting the galaxy in two, causing half of the galaxy to be obscured from the Emperor's Astronomicon, meaning the planets there are all more or less isolated. Warp travel is possible, but so much more dangerous, and warp travel is already incredibly dangerous as is. So... It's pretty bad. I think that's what she's referring to. You hear a heavy exhale, rustling fabric and metallic clicking. By the Emperor's grace, the ritual was successful. Your vessel's temperament presented a challenge. Its cold steel grip did not allow me to breathe freely even for a second. It is as if the depths of the ship housed not only machine spirits, but something other. Now I will retreat to my chambers and recover my strength. Send for me if you have need of me. This might just be the ritual required for her to attune with the ship, so maybe it only needs to happen once. In which case, the deaths of some servants. I mean, you know, it happens. It's Warhammer 40k. You should, uh... You know, read about how they refuel warp drives. That's a fun process. Lord Captain, congratulations on acquiring a navigator. Spare me a few moments of your time, please. There are several matters that require your attention. First of all, I want to report on the condition of the station, Durak 5. Had you opted to begin your visit to the Rykat system with a different destination, the station could have become critically unstable. Fortunately, the decision to immediately visit the representatives of the Navis Nobilite brought us precious time. We can either send our forces to disassemble the station and procure technological components for our own vessel, or attempt to save as many valuables as we can. Uh, I will not stoop to pillaging? No. Um, gather any components you can that may be of use on the ship. Yeah, let's... let's... See if we can't uh, repair our ship. As you command, Lord Captain. And that's cool. So, this is telling us, just uh, you know, indirectly, not directly telling us, but showing us through uh, our own actions and how they panned out, that when you arrive in a system, the order of which you do things might actually matter. It might not always matter, but it does seem to have mattered in this case. Which is cool. With your permission, I would also like to remind you that we are still looking for an Engine Seer Prime. Both the vessel and its machine spirits are in desperate need of oversight by an experienced tech priest. We are also missing some crew, and much more importantly, we have not yet located Heinrich von Kallox, the right hand of the Lord Inquisitor. Now we know for sure he was not at Irak 5, so keep this in mind when making any future plans. <laughs> what is this? No. Thank you, Vigdis. That will be all for now. As it pleases you, Lord Captain. Alright. Um. So, we can do more here, right? We can... Extract them? Extract you. 
The mobile mining outpost assembled in accordance with the blessed standard template construct. This small industrial complex can be employed on practically any world, however inhospitable. The surf clan assigned to it will devote itself to maintenance on the sacred mechanisms and the extraction of resources needed by the rogue trader. Okay. You can set up little mining colonies. That's yeah, pretty cool. So we got Rekad Majoris here. We have um, whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> this is the prison planetoid. And an unidentified void ship, which did this move. Let's quickly look at our void ship. Did we get... We got a whole lot of scrap. Hull integrity. Upgrade hull, 65 scrap. We're currently at 134. What's the hull? Okay, 148. That's that's significant. Do we do it again? I, mean, I don't know what other parts we might need to find here. I don't know how we're supposed to do this. I think we probably just have to level up. Because it doesn't seem like we can actually interact with anything here. But, post, we do have a new character, Cassia here. Can probably be our warp channeler, because this requires lore warp. I reckon she's got... Oh, I actually still have the best lore warp, interestingly enough. Master of Etherics. Yeah, you're still the best for this job. Supreme Commander. I need to take that role. That's just the sensible thing to do. I, I guess I'll put her in as the warp channeler. She's not particularly good at the job, but... Okay. Oh! Do we get these because of the characters that we have here? Well, because of the posts that we have occupied. No, we still have them. We just can't use them. All right. These, I guess, will be unlocked. I reckon all of this will be made more clear later down the line. I don't know if we should be spending our scrap, but, I mean, more hull points is never a bad thing. So, screw it. We're going to upgrade the hull of our ship substantially. I, I don't care so much about the ram. Um, I'll do one upgrade just to see what it's like, what it actually does here. Okay, damage reduction. Oh, it does give damage reduction. Well, that's just when ramming. Yeah, okay. Our hull integrity is pretty good. 176. It's quite a lot. We have a pretty tough ship at this point. Do we have a Rykod Minoris? It seems like these planets... I mean, I don't know what's happening there. Sorry, Rykod Majoris. Let's actually head here. It's close by. Oh. Oh. Bridge coordinates, that's cool. Begin scan. I, I hope all the planets look different. That it's always just kind of cool to me to see the planets from a distance. So let's begin a scan here. It's going to be like a Mass Effect style... Uh... Okay. Um, Tithe Grade S111. Extractium. What did this do? Nothing. What, what did it say? Already explored. No resources. Okay, well, I guess it's just a, a shitty planet. I wish it gave a teeny bit of flavor text, but that's okay. So we could collect some crew here on the prison colony. That thing didn't move. It's just drifting there. It's an unidentified ship. Well, let's head here. Lord Captain, there is some commotion on the officer's deck. The Lady Navigator has left her quarters and is currently in the ward room where uninitiated crew members are shunning her in terror. Perhaps you should find out what has brought Cassia to the deck. Oh, no. This is what I was afraid of. Cass? Okay. So she's just chilling there now. She bows. Oh, Lord <laughs> Captain, my apologies. I... I did not notice your entrance. Lady Navigator is engrossed in perusing the dusty tomes, which appear to have been neglected by the other officers. Be it because of sloth, dullness of mind. When you walk closer, Cassia looks up to you, starts, and hides a weathered book behind her back. Point at the book in Cassia's hands. I see you are fond of reading. Oh, oh. this. 
I found this fascinating reed on one of the shelves. And I must say, it has caught my eye. Its every chapter is written in verse. I find it so beautiful and enrapturing. There is an innocence to her, much as was suggested. Just a very a type of innocence that's used to getting everything that she wants. Spoiled, you might say. Yurak V had a vast archive of its own, of course. Although most of the works within had to do with scholarly disciplines of some sort or another. Only in my sparse moments of respite was I allowed to escape into the pages of more embellished works. <laughs> Cassia gently brushes the dust off of the cover with her thin, clawed hand, her eyes filled with longing after reminiscing about her lost home. Interesting. The events that took place on Urak 5 must have shaken you greatly. Are you well? One should not underestimate the navigators of House Orcelio, Lord Captain. Like a shawl of pale smoke, a faint malaise hangs upon my shoulders. But it will not be the slightest hindrance to my duty to humanity, and my duty to you. Cassia's response is reserved and pointedly decorous, clearly intended to create a distance between you. Okay, doesn't like us asking about her personal well-being. Your only attendant is your valet from Murak 5. Do my servants not measure up to your standards? Uh, no, no. It is not that at all, Lord Captain. It is just that Uve is quite capable of carrying out his duties by himself. He is well accustomed to my... my whims and preferences. What does that mean, exactly? Cassia cringes ever so slightly, adjusts the adornment on her forehead, and then awkwardly hides her clawed fingers in the folds of her clothes. The unnatural appearance of navigators often becomes the topic of gossip among many lowly servants and officers alike. It is unsurprising, then, that Cassia prefers the company of one who is used to how she looks. Okay, she's a bit self-conscious about the fact that, you know, she's a bit of a mutant. I hope that you have had ample time to calm yourself and your powers. There are people on this ship who are far more impulsive and dangerous to others, and far less devoted to the God Emperor than a herald of the Navis Nobilite. <laughs> but I did not need your words to see the shades of umber unease that whirl around your subjects whenever I am near. Were I not acquainted with such a reaction, I could have found their behavior in your question just now insulting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lord Captain, would you kindly explain to me why you are pestering me with these questions? Inquiring about my mood and my needs, showing an interest in the books I am enjoying? You are behaving as if you possessed a shred of fellow feeling for one such as I. Interesting. She's just straight up not being... She's not used to being treated as a human. <gasps> I beg your pardon, Lord Captain. That was no way for a navigator to conduct herself. Okay. Frightened by her own words, Cassia covers her mouth, pales, blushes, and pales again, and hides her face behind the cascade of her snow-white hair. <laughs> okay, we could be a jerk? A jerk? A jerk or not a jerk? I guess we'll be not a jerk. Or this isn't so much of a jerk, but it's the, the way I would say it is kind of jerk esque. That's a word, by the way. Uh, you have nothing to apologize for. Human emotions are natural, be they good or bad. And it is just as natural to share them with others. Please forgive me. I cannot even understand myself right now. Your words and attention have reminded me of life on the station. Of Theobald and Felek. I do not understand. They were merely the keepers of Urak 5. So, why do memories of those two make me feel a strange heaviness here? Because whatever you felt for them was probably a result of serious Stockholm Syndrome. Like, Theobald. 
may have been nice, but in an overbearing, worshipful sort of way, which, you know, if that's the only niceness you've ever known, that's pretty fucked up. And then, obviously, Felek, uh, well, <laughs> not, not so nice. He wanted to kill you. <laughs> At the same time, I find myself overwhelmed with new excitement and anticipation. At last, I have set foot outside my familiar walls and into a world that I have only seen before in the pages of books. Your ship alone is a treasure trove of remarkable artifacts and curiosities. And just imagine the things that await beyond, but... <sighs> My delight must seem childish to you, surely. In your heart, you must be finding all this quite amusing. <laughs> uh, a bit. A bit. It would also be adorable if, you know, your emotional mood swings couldn't melt people. Uh, so, <laughs> forgive my, uh, wariness. Um, what I find is that... Mistaken belief that anyone here would be interested in... God! Jesus, you can say to jerk things. It's not even evil, it's just mean. <laughs> I understand what you are going through. My own life was turned upside down not too long ago. And I'm not in the habit of finding amusement at the expense of my people. Just remember to keep your emotions in check. Yeah, for her, I think she has to keep her emotions in some check. Although, it might be better to make her feel more at ease. No, we'll, we'll do that. I understand what you are going through. My own life was turned upside down not too long ago. <laughs> Indeed. I... I did not know. That is to say, I could not have known, as it is the first time we are speaking in a circumstance so... private. My word, when I found this place, it was so full of officers. Why did they all leave? <laughs> uh, <laughs> why can't we just be straightforward? <laughs> um, perhaps my people did not wish to disturb you. Or because my presence offends them. <laughs> then I must take my leave as well. I am due to inspect the Sanctum Navis after the communion ritual and prepare the chamber for the upcoming warp jump. Thank you for your company. All right. Okay. A little bit less wary of her. No, that 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 helped. At least she wasn't melting people. I was with um, what is her name? Our master of the box is uh, transmission and her warning. I was kind of expecting like to walk in and find a room full of, like dead crew member. Just melted passively, not even because the navigator was like trying to melt them, just because you know she got upset, she stubbed her toe. <laughs> but it seems like she just scared them away, which is fine, and not even like trying to scare them away. So that's that's really it's on them now, it's reasonable for them. I don't blame them for wanting to be somewhere else. But uh, at the very least, there was no malign intent from our navigator, so. I think we can trust her to at least try and do the right thing. She's very hard to read. Like, at times she acts spoiled. At times she's very, like, aware of that. At times she's impulsive. At times she's much more calculated. She's an odd creature, and you know what? That works for a navigator. That's kind of how they are. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's, let's get back to, uh, directing our ship here. So, we will continue on to the prison moon. Hopefully with that, no, no, not again. <laughs> um, Lord Captain, sorry to disturb you. Victus pauses, as if listening to something. It's pandemonium outside the bridge gate. 
One of the officers seems to be demanding an audience with you in person. I think I hear Master Worsarian's voice. In any case, I wanted to warn you in advance. Worsarian. So Abelard wants to, uh, wants to speak? Is he causing the pandemonium? Surely not. He might have trouble with, uh, Cassia. And there's a guard. The everyday sounds of the bridge are disrupted by voices in anger. Abelard's voice the loudest of all. This is not the conduct of an officer. These are the antics of a highborn brat out on a lark. Explain yourself, Lieutenant. Abrilla Vent, the young woman standing before Abelard, Abelard strives with all her might not to quail under the onslaught of her superior's anger, but she falters. Or she falters, but then manages to look him in the eye and say, I, I apologize, sir, but I must speak to the Lord Captain. Very well, Lieutenant. You may address the Lord Captain, not least because I see you have already seen fit to disturb her. Your unauthorized appearance on the bridge and display of belligerence towards a higher-ranking officer will not, will be logged on your personal file without delay. Lord Captain, Lieutenant Avrila Vent, requesting permission to speak. Vent falls silent and then adds rashly, on a matter of extreme importance and urgency. You may speak, but I want to hear a report, not a shouting match. Having two officers bickering in full view of the bridge is unacceptable. I am sorry, Lord Captain. I I thought that drastic times called for drastic measures, Vent exclaims hotly. This matter cannot wait. Any minute now, an assault unit will be dispatched to the lower decks to crush the workers' strike by any means necessary. But I am convinced that this step is unwarranted and that the crisis itself was provoked by the actions of one of the senior officers. Vent is almost trembling with tension as she delivers her speak, her face extremely pale. Abelard, in no hurry to intervene, lets out a skeptical huff. <laughs> Lord Captain, I urge you to investigate the actions of Seneschal Worsarian, and to intervene in what's happening on the lower decks, because very soon we will have a mutiny or a massacre on our hands. Okay. Well, Worsarian, huh? Uh, what did Abelard do? Or what do you think Abelard did? I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. Vent reels off the last words as though she knows them by heart. She has clearly been preparing to say them for some time. When she is finished, she casts an anxious glance at Abelard, then at you. There's an insurrection in the making aboard my ship, and no one has informed me. I would not deem it a problem worthy of the rogue trader's attention. The lower decks, as it so happens, are in revolt. Thirty-some years ago, we had a revolutionary leader rise up who di dared to establish a worker's rule across the entire ship. It took a month to restore order, but even eight years later, we were still battling rumors that the hero had survived his execution and was on the verge of gathering people to fight against tyranny once more, Abelard scoffs. Needless to say, the rumors were baseless. As for the current situation, we have sufficient enforcers to deal with it. Okay. But on this ship... The word of the Lord Captain carries more weight than a salvo from a hundred bolters. I'm sure if the rogue traitor addresses the malcontents directly, she will quell the unrest. I dread to think what problem will... I dread to think what problem you will disturb the rogue traitor with next. Perhaps you will ask the Lord Captain to break up brawls in the mess room. I have already given you the means to resolve this problem. You simply need to use them. If I may, your ladyship, sending a hit squad to crush the rebellion is a means of ignoring the problem, not solving it. Indeed. Uh, one must address an issue at its heart, not quell the symptoms of the issue if you wish the issue to actually solve itself. Real world events, you know, can show this right now. There is a current conflict, I'm not going to name it by name, where, uh, you know, one side of the conflict is uh, very intent on continuously uh, whacking the... Uh, militant uh, branch of another side of the conflict which is only stirring up more discontent every single time and creating this wide spiraling issue that is not solving the conflict at all. 
It's, uh, you know, I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Not, not that I'm taking sides with the militant uh, group that is in question here, but uh, just saying the two sides here are not addressing the problem. They're just making it worse. Anyways, how did all this start? The situation could boil over at any minute. So I'll give you a condensed version. It all began when the enforcers found a cultist amulet on the body of someone who'd been killed in a drunken brawl. We reported it up the chain immediately, arranged for a cleansing rite to be performed, and opened an investigation. No heretics have been found alive, but the search has brought tensions between the enforcers and the workers to a head. And where does Seneschal Wessarian come into all of this? I shall explain, Abelard in tones grimly. All right. I beg you to hurry. Time is running out. I will not hurry, since my competence is under scrutiny. I shall speak for as long as I see fit. There is an established order to the way things are done on this ship, and one of the pillars of that system is that the rogue trader's attention is not distracted by trivial matters. It is the Seneschal's role to ensure that. I have always handled internal problems myself, so, of course, when I received information about cultists hiding on the lower decks, I took the matter in hand. So long as I live, not one of the vermin who murdered Theodora von Valantius will find refuge on her ship. You were far too heavy-handed, Seneschal Wessarian. Arrests, interrogations, mass punishments of four entire sectors. It has driven people to the brink, Vent says bitterly. Now there is a strike on the lower decks, in Depot 4 to be precise. Three worker clans are involved, but many more are passively supporting them. The situation could degenerate into an all-out insurrection, but I reported my concerns. The only response I received was an order to dispatch an assault unit and crush the strike with maximum force. What is Depot 4? Depot 4 is one of the poorest sectors on the lower decks. It is home to the clans of the general laborers. They are not as valuable to the ship as the families who have served its specialized systems for generations. They are an easily replaceable resource, and one which is now, more besides, giving succor to cultists and minions of the Arch Enemy. Depot 4 is poor and troubled, but at worst that means drunken fights and illegal rot gut brewing. We have, hands we have handled the workers of Depot 4 in the past. We would have done so again in the crackdown, or if the crackdown on Depot 4 hadn't been so harsh. The other important point to bear in mind, the problem is not limited to this sector is located on one of the most populated lower decks, and everything that happens there has a knock-on effect on all neighboring sectors. I, I'm, I'm inclined to believe our Avrila here. She, she has direct hands-on experience. It's, it's always better to listen to the lower managers that are citing problems than the people up at top that are talking about, that, that don't really have a full view of what's going on down below. I, I respect Abelard, but I think he doesn't have the full picture. Abelard, what do you have to say about all of this? I see no need to add anything. I acted with the remit of my authority, guided exclusively by the best interests of your protectorate and your personal safety. If you wish to confirm the rectitude of my actions for yourself, I have no objections. Okay. For my part, I urge the Lord Captain to go down to the lower decks, stop the assault unit, and speak directly to the people. You will see that they are not lying or harboring heretics. That way, you will stop the uprising before it begins. Uh, definitely not going to do this. So, I don't know if this means that I'm still going down to the lower decks. I think this is what it means. I am certain the Seneschal was acting within his authority, but I will verify the soundness of his decisions for myself. Rome preserve you, Lord Captain. I thank you for your support. Abelard grits his teeth slightly. An enterprise bordering on the sophomoric, but please yourself, Lord Captain. However, I categorically insist that I escort you. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> you may do so. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, that's the only party we can bring, so... I guess even the Navigator's coming. She'll, uh, put the fear into the enemy. Any potential enemies, that is. So, this is cool. We're still dealing with a whole lot of fallout from, uh... 
how uh, Theodora von Valencius ran things. I'm not going to run things the same way she did. We're going to do things differently. I don't know exactly how she did it. There might be some overlap, but... It is uh, absolutely possible that we might be doing things completely differently. Dark echelons. What does that mean? Hey, it's Wasarian! Take that scum! Look who it is! All of this is his fault! Okay, so they just threw something at him. Abelard reflexively wipes the sweat from his brow in a startlingly human gesture, and a telling one, a rare moment where he allows his age and weariness to show through his armor-like veneer of self-assurance. The lower decks are a source of endless problems. Sometimes I dearly regret we cannot replace all the locals with servitors. Let's keep moving. We need to get to the bottom of this. They clearly don't like him down here. Um, wow. Nobles from the upper decks down, to, down here to see us. What did this say? Something resembling a nest made out of thermal insulation material. This must be where the workers sleep between shifts. Yeah, this looks pretty grim. I always have a backup plan. Well, a valve? Maybe we can turn this? Just, ju it's just a valve. What advice do you seek? Alright. Uh, lower deck rabble? Greetings, your graces! Is there money to be made? More valves. More valves. Lots of valves. Let's open this door. I think it's good that we tour all the parts of the ship. Or as much of it as we can. Yeah, there's some goods here. We can steal it from the lower decks. <coughs> what do we have? Machine right sets. Some things to steal. Hopefully this doesn't actually trigger any problems, but I guess we'll see. We cannot interact with the valves. What's this? Inside the box, a string of scratched letters runs along the edge. Different first names, but the same surname. It looks like this box has been passed down in the family from generation to generation. Just a, a toolbox, from the looks of it. But shows you how rough things are down here when they're passing their toolboxes down generation to generation. Rise to the top, <laughs> or get left in the dust. So, we will continue on. Oh, this looks like something. These are the enforcers. The sound of a heated discussion reverberates through the ship's bays. Lieutenant Avrila Vent of the ship's enforcers is barring the path of a heavily built assault unit officer, and judging by their expressions and tone, the standoff has dragged on for some time already and has reached a boiling point. I have my orders to put an end to the unrest and purge the sector. You can take your orders and shove them. This is my deck and my sector. There are only three people who can waltz in here without my express permission. The first officer, the rogue trader, and the emperor himself. <laughs> so, not all my lessons fall on deaf ears. Abelard mutters in crabby approval. He does not clarify whether he means Lieutenant Vent, the officer looming over her, or both. <laughs> like that. Your ladyship! Noticing you, the two junior officers snap to attention and salute. The subordinates following suit in... Uh... A moment later. What's the situation? Your ladyship, my people have knocked down... Sorry. Your ladyship, my people have locked down the bay where the strikers are, including their leaders. We have the situation under control as far as resources allow. We encountered some locals on our way here. Their conduct was outrageous. They even tried to throw things at us. Vent pales slightly. People are getting desperate, clearly. They saw the assault unit and decided they had nothing left to lose. I mean, I apologize, Lord Captain. It is outrageous. I'm sure the people simply didn't recognize you. It shouldn't have occurred otherwise, or it wouldn't have occurred otherwise. We will deal with them once the current situation is resolved. I wish to speak to the strikers. Abelard's mouth twists, but he restrains himself and says nothing. Right you are, Lord Captain. Allow me to wish you good luck. Hope gleams in her eyes. Alright. Uh, they're up there over that way. Okay. Well, Let us not way. dawdle. Here's the uh, the guards. Here's Vent. There are the strikers. 
a dozen pairs of eyes stare apprehensively at you. The people before you are typical inhabitants of the lower decks. You take in their simple clothing, crude weapons, and faces that display varying levels of mutation, from the barely discernible to the strange to the outright grotesque. Yeah, anything, anything weird? I mean, th this is pretty normal. They're all very pale, of course. Voidborn. These two are going to be the leaders. Rivet. A whisper passes through the crowd, and you detect a mixture of fear, astonishment, and joy in their reactions. Finally, three people break away from the crowd. An elderly woman and two men. These must be the leaders. They bow clumsily before you. Lord Captain, you've come down to us. Uh, I don't think we were attacked. They just threw something. Let's not, uh, let's not blow this out of proportion. Tell me what is troubling you. Why are you striking? Striking? That's news to us, your ladyship, says a tall, thin man in worker's garb. All we're doing is asking questions, saying what we think. Shut up, Rivet, snaps the old woman, who turns her hostile, dark eyes on you. Here's the deal, your ladyship. Your, d your damned enforcers are all over us down here. They say they're looking for cultists. One wrong word and they're reaching for their battens. If they want to punish someone, they turn off the heating for whole bays for weeks at a time. So we get sick and freeze. In my clan, two little ones die from inflammation in their lungs. Inflammation, not information. All because of these enforcers. The old woman spits on the floor and rubs at the at the spittle with the toe of her worn out shoe. Argenta does not interrupt the workers, but you see the sadness well up in her eyes when the children's deaths are mentioned. She quietly whispers a requiem prayer and makes a sign over herself. Man, Argenta's awesome. It's all true. Vent is the only enforcer officer who stood up for us. It's clear as day who had a mother from the lower decks and who grew up amidships and has no fellow feeling towards us. The grim man with the scarred face throws up his arms. Your ladyship, we're no villains here. We're honest workers, your servants. We've plotted no disorder and we went on strike openly and now we've got guns pointed at us. All we're doing is asking to be allowed to work in peace without being harassed. Okay, um... The persecution started apropos of nothing, you say. I was told that one of you was found in possession of a cultist amulet, and that there are heretics hiding here. A cultist amulet? What's that? The Gugar they found on a dead drunkard? If it was something evil or forbidden, we sure didn't know. The enforcers just said they were looking for heretics among us, and anyone obstructing their investigation would be punished. But how could there be heretics here? We know our own people. There have been no new faces around. Definitely not. And if there were, we'd be the first to report them. And as for this amulet, or whatever it is, they took it off a dead boy. There are no cultists still breathing in our sector, that's for sure. But when that fight broke out, some enterprising folks looted the bodies. The boots they came back with Nobody's ever tread on these decks in boots so far, and I can tell you that. Seems to me these cultists have better commanders than us. Oh yeah, those boots were really fine. And there was no harm in taking them, right? As for this amulet, it must have been pocketed by someone who didn't know any better. We don't need any amulets around here. We all worship the Emperor. And when we're looking, and when we're working, we bow down before the machine spirits of the large and small transformers in the servo motor. The same way my grandfather was taught a hundred years ago by a tech priest we, who came calling. Believe us, your ladyship. We are people of the faith. Naive children, weren't you taught from an early age about the danger of the arch enemy's creations? Weren't you warned that any unfamiliar object could be one of them? We were told, Holy Sister, but it was long ago. The last time we saw a confessor in our sector, it was just after I had me third little one. That is regrettable. But you cannot lay the burden of leading a righteous life on the shoulders of the Holy Fathers. Who will blame, or who will you blame, when beasts crawl out of those amulets you stole from the heretics? The Holy Father who was not there, or the scavenger who brought evil down on himself and his neighbors? Abelard, do you have anything to add? I authorize the use of all necessary measures to locate chaos worshippers hiding in this sector. 
The specific steps taken by the officers were reported to me. Abelard frowns, clearly disgruntled at having to explain himself in the workers' presence. Nevertheless, I am certain that their actions were justified. Cultists are no drunken stevedores. They are the enemy and a threat to the ship. Neutralizing them demands decisive action. What changes do you want? Would you look at this? The exalted Lord Captain herself is asking us bilge rats what we want. Well, here's what's what. We want you to rein in your damned enforcers, to quit turning off the heat, and to stop battering everything that moves. No, that's not it. We want the enforcers gone from here, and we want to be armed. Give us arms, and we'll govern ourselves. We'll defend ourselves if these cultists show their faces. I've been leader of my clan for 20 years now. Getting rid of these club-wielding thugs can only improve things around here. You've gone too far, old man. They never let us let the maggots on the lower decks live without the enforcers breathing down their necks. They probably even insist on enforcers on the upper decks, too. As for weapons, what do we need them for? Before the first day's out, we'll have someone shooting their neighbor out for stupidity or drunkenness. We don't need that. If the enforcers stop hassling us, that'll be enough. In return, we'll find the scavengers who robbed the cultist bodies. We'll talk to them, one lower decker to another. If there's any more of those damn amulets about, we'll hand them over to you the enforcers ourselves. You speak for yourself and your clan, and I'll speak for me and mine. I don't want empty gestures, I want real change. They'll promise us the world now, but as soon as the anointed turns her back, these brutes will be on us even harder than before, all because we dared to speak out. The tall worker's eyes dart between the two arguing leaders. Every few seconds, he opens his mouth as if planning to agree, but each time he falls silent, simply making a few vague noises of approval. Thoughts, Abelard. The story about going scavenging for boots and accidentally picking up a heretical amulet doesn't convince me. These people were moments away from rebelling and possibly becoming minions of the archenemy. We must not give them what they want. Even if they did acquire something innocently, purely out of their own stupidity, that does not mean... <laughs> that does not mean they are not tainted with corruption. What begins as petty thievery can turn into a far greater problem. I have seen it before. Abelard's face darkens momentarily. In my second war, there was a sergeant in the Imperial Guard Regiment that was stationed nearby. The sergeant took an ordinary pocket knife from the body of a heretic, and the whole unit lost their lives for it. When they finally managed to break into the barracks, they had found not a single survivor, only the pocket knife, which had grown through all the rows or which had grown through all the rows of beds like a metal choking vine. So when it comes to scavengers, malcontents, strikers, or whatever they'll turn into next, my verdict is simple. Give them no quarter. I'm gonna use coercion here. Spreading anarchy on this ship is the first step towards embracing chaos. Putting weapons into untrained hands will be even worse. What's more, the enforcers are needed to maintain oversight and order. Withdraw those demands and we will consider the rest. The tall worker they call Rivet shrugs and casts a sidelong glance at the woman. Old oh, Ned, listen, listen. The Lord Captain her herself has come down to us and offered us and is offering us concessions. And I don't know a single person in the whole of Depot 4 who's ever stood next to the rogue trader, let alone talk to them. Back down. Now's no time to be a stubborn old crone. Listen to us, old Nan. The three clans of Depot 4 ought to act as one. We've made up our minds. It's your turn to decide. Don't ask them to disband the enforcers or give us weapons. We don't need any of that. The old woman hisses in dissatisfaction. You two are ganging up on me. Is that it? So brave you are against an old woman. But I'll shut up. I will indeed. I won't go against the two clan leaders on my own. And if you want to make peace with the enforcers, make your peace. That's great. Just fantastic. Lord Captain, we're all agreed. Then it's decided. The persecution will stop, and I will expect you to assist in locating any remaining amulets or weapons left by the cultists. Your ladyship, thank you. You have not abandoned us lower deckers. You came yourself and settled everything. I'll tell my grandchildren about this. Of course, your ladyship. We'll root out any nasty business faster than the enforcers, and we'll leave no stone unturned. 
Hopefully that solves the problem. I have my doubts. But hey, at least we can give them the benefit of the doubt and we can let them try. If it fails, we can always send in the enforcers after. It, uh, you know, that's how it is. We give them a chance to sort out their own problems. You know, there's no sense in sorting out the problems for them right now. Either way, it's going to, uh, you know... It's kind of like, you know, do, do you excise the problem right now when it's not necessarily worthy of an excision? Or do you wait and make sure that it's actually worthy <laughs> of extreme measures? All right, looks like we got some stuff here. Good, 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 good. Keep your wits about you. Another valve? All right. The heat sink warms up the air around it to a scorching temperature. This is the warmest part of the bay. The workers have even dragged deck chairs here. <laughs> Always keep your eye on the where prize. They, uh, where they chill out, huh? Man, this has got to be grim. Imagine, like, living your entire life in this. You live and die in this place. Recycled, you know, stale air. Alternating, you know, sweltering hot open. to freezing cold. Never seeing the sky. Abelard stops unexpectedly. For stopping unexpectedly, Abelard imperiously dismisses the unit to stand at a distance and addresses your companion, saying, I have an urgent matter to discuss with the Lord Captain. Please, give us a moment. This ought to be interesting. Abelard looks at you, and his last vestiges of restraint vanish. Well, are you pleased with your investigation, Lord Captain? You kowtowed to the disloyal rabble. You believe their lies and showed them leniency. Next time the ship is attacked by cultists, that rabble will welcome them in open arms and allow them to wreak whatever havoc they like because they see you as a weak leader. Is that how they see your future? Is that how you see your future at the helm of the Von Valancius Protectorate? Um, I'm okay with him speaking openly. You know, one of the worst things you can do as a leader is to create an echo chamber. Um, one of the one of the things actually in in uh, one of the first books in the I think it was the first book in the Horus Heresy series, where you have uh, Horus leading the Sons of Horus back well before their fall and eventual descent into becoming the Black Legion. Um, you had Horus as the Primarch, and then he kept four. Lord Captains as his personal advisors, the Mornaval. Each one of these members of the Mornaval was uh, meant to represent one of the uh, the four humors in like ancient medieval uh, medical um, in the ancient medieval medical field. So it was like the phlegmatic, choleric, uh, taciturn? No. Um, Saturnine? I think. I, I don't remember what the four are, but uh, Basically, they were all rep meant to represent a different viewpoint, and they were also they were called naysmiths. And basically, their their whole idea was to prevent to present different uh, viewpoints onto a subject. So when Horus was there making big decisions, they would be there actually specifically to tell him like, "Hey, I think this is a better idea," or "Hey, this is a different option here." And because they were of four completely different um, idea, or I guess not ideologies, but um, mindsets that they would give wildly different um, advice on how to do things. And I thought it was a really cool uh, idea. And I think that's something that leaders everywhere in every situation should do. Don't silence opposition. Instead, listen to opposition and, you know, see what you can learn from them. Because there's always something to be learned from somebody that has a different opinion to you. I mean, one needs to, of course, take how educated is the opinion. Not all opinions are equal. That is something that the modern world needs to get through its head. A, uh, <laughs> a trained scientist that has worked his entire, or his or her entire life on a specific subject, giving an assessment on that subject does not have the same value to their opinion as somebody that has, you know, Googled the subject for 15 minutes. No, the scientist has a lot more credibility. But if it's multiple people that are all very well educated, all providing their opinions onto a subject, that is when it is important. And uh, I feel Abelard is very well versed in this subject, so I'm not going to tell him to 
uh, not speak to me with that tone. He can be angry. That's fine. He can disagree with me. That's okay. Um, there is some truth to your criticism. I'm not going to immediately turn it against him. I'm not going to pull this no-you stuff. I should say so. Abelard heaves a sigh, and, but he visibly relaxes. You simply needed to trust me. I would have handled the situation myself had you not decided to intervene. Remember, Lord Captain Theodora. Or remember Lord Captain Theodora. Do you think she ever set one slippered foot on the lower decks? No, she did not. Such matters were left to myself and the junior officers while she dedicated herself to her grand designs for the Protectorate, as any true strategist and rogue trader ought. This is going to piss him off, but I also think it is very true. Maybe if Theodora had spent more time on trifling matters, she would not have wound up dead. There is a new Lord Captain aboard the ship now, and I will not repeat her mistake. I would be only too willing to trust in my Seneschal and not fill my head with such matters, but the situation had spiraled out of your control. Uh, no, I'm going to say this. This is the logical one. Abelard looks at you, stunned, and exhales loudly. Then he nods curtly. I commend your decisiveness, but I am uncomfortable with introducing new protocols in the midst of a crisis. I would expect as much from a man like him, and that's fine. And Abelard stands straight at attention. I lost my temper, Lord Captain. I, I believe I ought to explain myself. Abelard speaks slowly, the words not coming easily to him. Prosperity of the Von Valencius Protectorate is not just an empty phrase to me. I left the Imperial Navy for a chance to see it flourish. It was the most momentous decision of my life. I did it because I saw in Lord Captain Theodora's deeds the sign of true greatness. Rogue traders do not simply forge new routes and capture new worlds. They create order out of anarchy. That creative impulse was entirely lacking during my time in the military. So I left behind everything I had known, everything my family had. I come from a long line of officers, and I embarked upon this incredibly reckless venture. Lord Captain Theodora entrusted me with all the concerns she had no time for. She would go off on her flagship for long periods to distant frontiers on scouting voyages, and the advancement of the entire Protectorate rested on my shoulder. And then suddenly, everything that had been built over years and years began to quake, rattling like a flimsy hangar on a seismically active world. But she never took the chance to look at the foundations. One of the senior officers betrayed us all, and the rogue trader was killed. And who knows what is happening on the planets? I tell you this honestly, without fear of appearing weak. All this has come as a grievous blow to me. I am not panicking or grieving because I cannot allow myself to panic or grieve. I am duty-bound to aid the new rogue trader, to aid you, to find your footing as quickly as possible. And to do that, I must insulate you from problems that in the past have been dealt with by tried and tested procedures set out in the ship's regulations. Procedures that were established long ago and have functioned smoothly for decades cannot suddenly be deemed excess to requirements. Hmm. Okay, I value what Theodora created, and I trust that this situation is an aberration in the ship's otherwise smooth operation. Since the established procedures are working, I see no reason to change them. I have seen plenty of sentiment and hand-wringing in recent days, but very little competence. I have no plan- no. Um, Theodora trusted in established procedures, and she died. I won't make the same mistake. If you wish to keep building the future of the Von Valencius Protectorate with me, stop living in the past. That's going to be hard for him to accept. Or we could do this, but this is very much just about we exert our own authority for because we exert our own authority rather than giving a reason for it. I'm not asking for, like, complete overhaul of the procedures, just a little bit of flexibility here and there, a little bit more nuance than how things uh, were done before. I respect that there needs to be a rigid system in place, but that doesn't mean that it can't bend from time to time. He's doing things still as you would do it on a naval ship. 
Theodora trusted in established procedures, and she died. I won't make the same mistake. If you want to keep building the future of the Von Valancius Protectorate with me, stop living in the past. Abelard solemnly inclines his head. Yes, Lord Captain. After a moment's silence, he adds, looking at you with interest, your resolve is admirable and demonstrates strong leadership. I shall remember this moment, should my old habits ever begin to creep in. And now, please, let us leave the lower decks. If the rogue trader desires to stretch her legs, there are far more suitable places. I still like it. I fully understand where he's coming from. Ah, oh, wow, we leveled up again. The rest of the party is gone. I have a nose for profit um, and a taste for adventure. Let's, uh, let's, let's get I out of here. I always have a backup plan. And, uh... We'll level up on the bridge. That was cool. These little uh, interrupts. Um, I, I don't know how many of them or how frequent they're going to be. I reckon there'll probably be less after after a time. It's just there's a lot right now because we're dealing with a whole lot of fallout from what happened. And introducing all the new characters and new parts of the ships. So, you know, we got intro introduced to the lower docks there. Lower decks, I should say. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's cool. Role playing in this game is pretty stellar. It's it's like yeah, I would say it's it, for now it, it feels like it's on par with uh, Baldur's Gate, which uh, that's saying something. <laughs> you know, obviously graphically Baldur's Gate is a whole lot better. Um, but its level design is is better, but th this I think is going to offer a bit more like true exploration and a bit more open ended exploration. Uh, you know, we shouldn't necessarily compare the games, but they are, you know, similar in a lot of ways. So, um, what is happening now? I think we're just clicking on this, and that's what uh, what's going on. We're just loading into the uh, the screen, which apparently needs a loading window for some reason. Here we are. Uh, prison asteroid. This ought to be fun. Begin scan. What are we gonna find? So, Ricardi Filia, the prison planetoid. Guess. Uh, yeah, let's bring the whole party. I mean, who else? We can bring the whole party, we can replenish our crew right here, and then we will get our uh, tech priest to join up. And then we'll have a full uh, six-man team. Who knows? We might even be able to recruit somebody here. Maybe we'll find this uh, interrogator. I don't know if we're going to get the interrogator into our party. I imagine not. Um, that would be a bit odd. Though not impossible. Certainly not impossible. You know, again, rogue traders and inquisitors have kind of the ability to do whatever the hell they want. So, <laughs> you know, hey, it's an Arvis lighter. This is the workhorse of the Imperial Navy. It's the common, common shuttle. Sometimes retrofitted for combat, though uh, not the best at such, <laughs> to be sure. Let's level everybody up. So, what have we here? Do we get more talents? Yeah, choose another ability. Oh my god, we get so many of these. It's it's crazy cool, actually. What rank are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can't get... Ooh, we get a new psychic power. Fuck yes. All right. And we can unlock new... Nice. So, it is possible. You can unlock new uh, new disciplines. Because you can unlock Biomancy, Telepathy, Pyromancy, Sanctic. So we can get other abilities. Foreboding. Creates an area that lasts until the start of the Psyker's next turn. All allies within that area gain plus 4 times 2 times... My, so that's just plus 4% dodge. Their dodge chance cannot be less than the Psyker's perception bonus plus will bonus in percentage. So that would be 10 Okay. I mean, that's that's okay. We don't have psychic um, rating right now, so gotta keep that in mind. Uh, I need prescience or foreboding. Oh, we should get prescience for sure. I, I know in tabletop, prescience is awesome. The target gains four plus... Okay, so just four right now. Intelligence, perception, and fellowship, and willpower until the end of combat. This is another uh, one AP. Drop a buff on them. Don't have to think about it later type of ability. I, I'm taking it. I'm taking Prescience. It's a buff ability. That is what my character does. So, we're taking Prescience for warning. Then we can get foreboding later, and by then we should have some Psy rating. And we can also get Precognition, which will be pretty cool. 
Once per round, the Psyker's next turn is moved up by two turns in the turn's initiative sequence. This ability may allow the Psyker to have two turns in one round. That's fucking cool. Yeah, so if we're, like, really high in the initiative order, and there's no one above us, we would then go into the bottom of the initiative order in that initiative. <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah, you can take two turns. That's cool that they even allow that. That's uh, that's, that's really, really sick. All right. Um, new talent. Yeah, indeed. Can we get our Psy rating yet? I think not, right? No, it's still, uh, still locked. We need character level 10. Well, we are still going to take things that are going to assist in factors here uh so yeah we have edge of fate fate bringer we're going to take predicted downfall just going to reduce the dodge attempts the first dodge attempt of every enemy in combat so right now it's not going to be that good but it's going to get better later so we'll take predicted downfall so we just are doing like passive debuffs to the enemy and then we have active buffing with our character which is pretty cool so we shall complete there abelard be leveling up. I like the amount that we level up, and I love that ev basically every level up we get to make some sort of choice. That's uh, a big problem I have with the D and D system. So, extra weapon skill, or extra toughness, or of course extra strength, or extra agility. All of these are good. I'm actually going to give him extra agility here, and then we can give him. Um, Dueling Mastery. Gain a plus 15 bonus to parry? Maybe. Enemies gain no melee superiority bonuses against the character? I don't even know what that is. In melee combat... Oh, any targets that are surrounded by more allies than enemies receive... Okay, so that's what made... It's basically flanking bonuses. Um, I mean, that could be good. It will not die. It increases the wounds by half of your character's level. That's not great yet. I assume that's going to apply retroactively. Not solid projectiles. What's breaking point? We can't get it anyways. Um, dual weapon combat. We don't need. This is, of course, just like skill bonuses. That might be handy to pick up. So we do want to be able to increase these as we go. And we can, of course, do more characteristic bonuses. I might just give him a characteristic bonus. Just a weapon skill characteristic bonus. Can we? Yes. No, we cannot. We could give him a strength characteristic bonus then. Let's just do that. Simple, effective, just increase stats. Can't go wrong. Blasts. Okay, available abilities. What do you got? Perfect spot. While in cover, the operative gains 25% cover efficiency. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, we could give her foreboding. We could give her prescience. She actually has a psychic rating. So that would be 6% extra dodge to allies in an area. But I don't really want to have her... Um, she's she's like... I, I, she is a diviner. That's her lore. So... I, I do want her to... Have a unique place in our roster. So as not to create too much overlap here. What is sensory deprivation? This is a telepathy thing. Target makes a willpower resistance test. If it succeeds, the target is merely blinded until the start of the Psyker's next turn. If they fail, they become blinded and suffer an additional 5 penalty on all characteristics reduced by blindness. So what does blindness reduce by itself? It's minus 30 to ballistic skill and weapon skill and minus 30 to dodge and parry. That sounds really good. I'm actually going to take this. We're going to give her sensory deprivation. Give her a bit more of a combat roll. And we can give her a skill bonus. Okay. Um, I'm doing the lore warp. Um, her logic is 33. Her aware we're going to give her... We're going to make her our awareness. Yeah, she already has 65. We're going to put that to 75. Her awareness is really good. It's because her perception is really good. Um, yep, I like that. Argenta. What are you getting? Available characteristics. We already got ballistic skill. We can't get that further. Could get ourselves some willpower. Bring that up to 40. Could get some agility, too. My, uh, she already has 50. That's pretty good. I'm going to actually buff up our willpower. And uh, bolt weapon expert? Not yet. Uh, can't get that yet. Maybe just a, a characteristic training? Extra toughness? 
Yeah, she's a battle sister. She should be pretty tough. We'll give her a toughness training. So that's going to put her 30 hit points. Keep things simple. Now, do you get a new, like, ability? Yes, you do. Okay, so she already has the Lidless Stare. We want her to be able to, like, hit multiple enemies, because that's going to be her thing. She's going to be, like, AoE. All enemies within a 4-cell radius, so this does involve her getting kind of close, suffer a minus 10 plus 2 times 6, so minus 22 penalty to their willpower and toughness until the end of combat. That's pretty good. What's held in my gaze? The navigator deals from uh, 1 plus 12, so that would be 13, to... Oh my god. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> 6 plus 4 times 6, so... Okay, so it's 13 to 30 damage to an enemy. The enemy must pass a willpower resistance test or become immobilized until the start of the navigator's next turn. Immobilized enemies do not regain movement points at the beginning of their next turn and cannot use abilities that move them. That's awesome. One creature within a 16 cell radius. I'm taking held in my gaze. We're doing that. Again, I, sh I could look through all of these and make a more educated thing, but I'm not going to waste everybody's time doing that. So we're just going to take what immediately sounds cool. And then, of course, I'm going to continue to get things that are going to... Uh, I'm taking Unblinking Stare. Until the end of combat, enemies damaged by the Navigator suffer an additional 5 damage from all attacks of opportunity. Oh no, hold on. That's only attacks of opportunity. Uh, perilous Ways. Enemies moved by the Navigator. We, aren't, we don't have any move abilities yet. We only have a stun from the Lidless Stare, which also does damage. Um, strange Vitality. The Navigator heals 6 wounds at the beginning of every turn and gains plus 1 additional wound for every Navigator talent taken. The healing increases by plus one for every creature killed in between the navigator's turns. That's going to give her awesome survivability. Fuck it. I'm taking that. That's cool. I like that. All right. Here we are. What time are we on the episode? I have no idea. Is there I just money the to be made? Up, so. cool. My warp side <laughs> reveals something. Does it? Yes. Traps already. Pilot Raquel, who are you? Come in. Come in, escort. This is Captain Vicari. Escort, please, come in. The pale young woman looks at you with a mixture of hope and disbelief swirling in her eyes. You notice her hands trembling as she clutches her weapon. Who are you? Did you come from the planet? Are you reinforcement? Thanks, teeth. I'd never thought you'd come. Uh, we're not her sovereign. Her sovereign is technically... Uh, the ruler of Rykud Minoris. So we're not going to do this. Um, what happened here? There's been a prison riot on the planetoid. Sadly, it's being led by the prison warden himself, the Honorable Anaphagon Casteglia. He has allied himself with the rabble that he himself was supposed to watch and declared Riccati Filia to be, an to be independent of the authority of the system's lawful governor. Okay. I came here as a shuttle pilot alongside the venerable Yvain Winterscale, son of Caligos Winterscale, rogue traitor, vanquisher of Xenos, forever triumphant over the enemies of mankind. She details, enunciates every word of her overlord's title. Young Lord Winterscale wished to speak to the warden personally so he could put an end to this lawless treason. He and his escort went ahead and, she grows paler, I haven't been able to contact them over the Vox for a very long time now. Yvain, Yvain, Avalard mutters, stroking his beard. One of his distant younger offspring, yes. That's as much as I know about him, which means he hasn't distinguished himself in any meaningful way. Yvain Winterscale has made several diplomatic visits on Urak V on behalf of his father, rogue trader Caligos Winterscale. The great regent would not have granted entry to someone dishonorable, which means whatever happened in this terrible malodorous place, we must aid this man of noble blood. Perhaps we could get some, uh... A little bit of an in with the Winterscale Dynasty. I expect they're going to be our rivals. But that doesn't mean we can't make friends with some of them. Always good to have enemies amongst your... Oh, sorry. If, <laughs> always good to have friends amongst your enemies, not enemies amongst your friends. <laughs> Although that is good for keeping yourself on your toes always. <laughs> the Warden himself is spearheading the riot. Yes, she bites her lip. No one expected this. 
Master Castiglia is a nobleman from a respected governor house and a vassal to House Winterscale. All of a sudden, he proclaimed that Riccati Filia was now his personal domain, that the prisoners were his subjects, and that he would never bow to anyone again. It's pure heresy. Oh, it's almost like maybe the nobles aren't infallible. Uh, I, I, <laughs> who am I to say such things, though? <laughs> and I take it they're looking to forward to a diet of sand and gravel? What kind of madman would start to revolt on a barren rock? Yes, tell me about this planetoid. The only settlement on Riccati Filia is this penal colony. The prisoners work in the mines and domed quarries. They mine sulfur, serum dust, and sand, which is then melted down. A rather nondescript place, or it was, prior to the current events. Why would young Winterscale have left or felt the need to parlay with the dissidents? She sighs quietly. It's a personal matter. Master Castelia, the seditious warden, is Lord Evane's childhood friend. When my lord heard of the riot, the news saddened him greatly, and so he rushed here without delay, in hopes of bringing his old friend to his senses, no doubt. Okay. Evane seems all right. We should definitely help him. First winter scale in memory who prefers to talk first rather than shoot and slash. Yeah. <laughs> she smiles faintly. Young Lord Winterscale is not his father's shadow. He is determined to save his friend, and he won't back down. I pray to the throne that he is alive and well. He's gone for such he's been gone for such a long time, and I, I really don't like this place. Cassia frowns in confusion. Theobald executed his wife and only son on the mere suspicion of treason against House Orselio. So why did the noble Yvain rush to save someone who betrayed his house? Do bonds of friendship give one the right to make inexcusable mistakes? Cassia! <laughs> okay, uh... Is there anything I should be appraised of before I set out? Some of the rebels have holed up in the barracks. I don't know how many, but given this is the only way through to where the negotiations are taking place, I would expect heavy resistance. Please take caution, your ladyship. Lord Winterscale's guards mined the surface so that the rebels couldn't get to the shuttle. Yeah, we saw that already. One last thing. I'm looking for a man by the name of Heinrich von Kallox. He is here, perhaps. Unless it's one of the prisoners or guards, then it seems unlikely. There are no shuttles in working order other than yours and mine. There was nothing else anyone could have used to reach this place. You may excuse yourself, pilot. The woman freezes for a moment before asking hesitantly. Your ladyship, if I may have a minute of your time, I wouldn't have dared to trouble you with a personal matter, but the situation... In any case, have you been to the capital of Rykard Minoris yet? I wanted to ask if you saw a man there, a communications officer by the name of Jaspar. And remain disdainfully silent. The woman looks at you for a while longer, eyes laden with hope, then sighs. She bows. You can tell by the desperation in her eyes that she is exhausted, frightened, and wishes to be off this planetoid as quickly as possible. Okay, I, didn't, I, I was kind of hoping she would continue, um, but apparently she did not. Maybe the we can Emperor talk to her further. Me today. Uh, that's not good. No, I, mm, I, I feel kind of bad, but it's okay. The guard post has been vacant for a long time. There is a layer of dust on every surface. To the barracks. Yep. This will head in. Yeah, this place looks pretty grim. Yeah, here we are. I'm still new to the art of exploring. Argenta, don't you find it difficult to be without your sisters? You are a soldier without a squad. I will fight alongside my sisters again, but my present fate is not a burden to me. No matter where I go, or who I am with, I bring death to heretics. That is what matters. Always good to have goals. And a, and a sense of purpose. I like that the party members have, uh, you know, stuff. The remains of a meal, one far too lavish for even a hive world, let alone a prison colony. Interesting. A long string of names extends beneath the heading, Top Quarry Workers of the Cycle. Alright. Um, let's disable this before somebody... No, 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 no. To the top, oh, fuck. Or get left in the dust. Okay, we're gonna send, uh... Join me in prayer. Just her. Just along the side here. <laughs> Disarm that. I better myself through my service. Alright. Hmm. No, well, Would you look already. at that? Cool. Uh, we'll send Argenta. I woke up with a feeling of wonder. 
as if a field of flowers of was blossoming food. nearby. A child was saved from death. A thousand heretics were burning alive, begging and sobbing and howling. <laughs> Just in the nice dreams of an adeptus sororitas. You know, fields of flowers, saving children, heretics burning at the pyre, you know. Just, just, just nice things. <laughs> oh, I love it. Venerable Optimates, the best among us. The list is faded, but the names are uh, the names are barely legible. It seems like they do have like a... Who's humming? Is that you, Argenta? I think so. Prison Diary of Ati Shan, part one. Let's uh, check this. Rock shit! Why me? Why? I missed my tithe payment 12 years ago. 12 years! The inspector's writ got lost somewhere in the bowels of the planetary administrator and was lying there the whole time. But they made sh sure to remember to tack on the fines every month. By the time they found the blasted paper and finally informed me, the total sum was so obscene it would take three generations of my descendants, if I had any, to pay it off. My fate is sealed. Trial, sentence, prison. All because some daft rotter who shoved my paper in the wrong box. Yep, that sucks. I've been on the receiving end of uh, somebody else making an administration error and having to pay a shit ton of money. Not three generations worth of money, mind you. I'm not rotting on a prison colony. I am chilling up in a, uh, you know, a lovely city up in the north of the Netherlands. <laughs> to be fair, I think I got off pretty easy. My bed in the barracks is about as hard as that slab of old rockcrete I've got back home. Working in the quarry isn't much tougher than my old job, and rules, void take me. That old sod that governs Rikard Minoris is a bloody sadist by comparison. It's a strange old place. I haven't been beaten once yet. The guards bark orders all the time, but they never hit us. They also got this kind of inner circle of special chosen prisoners. The Optimatum, they call it. If you can get in, Emperor as my witness, you actually get a day off. They let you out of your cell and into the yard by the big barracks. And I tell you what, they let you rest there and feed you better than whatever swill they're giving us in the canteen. They told me it's to improve our motivation and all that. To foster a stronger desire to reform and become a worthy servant of the Imperium once more. But I know it for what it is. Just a club for the Warden's favorites. The same story as everyone else. Suck up to the people in power and get some swanky perks. They say the whole thing was the Warden's idea. Funny man, our Warden. He looks more noble than nobility itself. All groomed. Teeth, even. <laughs> Eyes burning. Boots so polished you can see yourself when you move to lick him. <laughs> but that nutter doesn't want people licking his boots. He walks around looking like he's deep in thought, all right, with only a couple of guards at his side. And sometimes, if you can believe it, talks to prisoners. What's your name? He asks them all quiet-like. Why were you condemned? Do you feel remorse? He never even yells at no one. Never orders to have him flogged. Instead, he doles out rewards to the special one. Keeps telling us things like how we should strive to make society believe in us again. Uh-huh. Whatever you say, Master Warden. Starting tomorrow, I'll be trying to join these optimates of yours. I'm stuck in here till the day I die, and that means no return to society for me. But with the Emperor's help, I might just join the ranks of our local elite. You know, it's not a bad... It's not a bad thing. Uh, can I just send this to... Uh, yeah, I can just add it to cargo. Apparently. That's cool. The light of terror shines yeah, for let's us. let's bring everybody else. Uh-oh. Uh Find Warden Steglia. Yeah, I, I want to talk to this Warden. He doesn't your actually seem like a bad guy. Will be your downfall. <sighs> Give me strength. Yeah, we, we know. Um, so, these are prison guards here. Or prisoners, I would assume. So, I've been ambushed. And we're in a bad position because she's here by herself. And we can't move. Okay, so if you get ambushed, there's no... Uh, Nothing you can do about it. Oops. Oh, Jesus. I hope they can't shoot through this. They probably can. Okay, if they can throw grenades through it, they can shoot through it. She's down. This is not good. I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm enraged. Yeah, I would be enraged too. <laughs> That's just downright mean. Nimble prisoner? Okay, so this is like different stats for the different ones. Wow, yeah, nimble. Fast. Well, I guess we're not going to be uh, talking here, my so we're going to send Abelard up to do Abelard things. I will do my duty. Dodged. I guess he's nimble. Can we get to them? No, we cannot. 
Um, I'm not going to use any of those. Victory I will use Endure. And, uh, yeah. We're in a bad position. And there's a whole lot of them. And her sororitas is <laughs> literally getting kicked while she's down. Idira, get up there. Cover me. Yes. Um, drop a forewarning on Argenta, if you would. And then we could we could attempt to do a sensory deprivation, or I could just kill one of them. That one's actually going to take a lot of damage. Okay, these ones are the regular ones, which have way less health. So we might be able to clear. Um. Ooh, we could do this, but that's going to friendly fire Argenta, and we don't want to do that. I don't think Argenta's going to be super thrilled about being blasted with psychic powers. Uh, I will analyze but of course. this enemy here. Give an analysis. The other ones already have one analysis point, so that's cool. And then I'm going to uh, blast that one with the psychic scream. So, turn of fate. A little bit of brain exploding. Sucks to be that guy. Cassia is going to advance be right here. Be careful not to cross my gaze. Yeah. We can held in gaze that one. It's going to lock him in place. What if we do the lidless stare and just fucking... No, that's also going to hit too many allies. Voice of command. Abelard. Or we use it on Argenta. Is it I'm going to use it on Argenta. Sort of, but... I'm, I'm doing this on Abelard. If I may. Um, so, he has the uh, officer ability as well, which is really cool. Because this is going to allow him to... Uh, Deliver Indeed. a whack to this guy. Gray hair, sure hair. Unfortunately, not much damage. But I should have used uh, Sworn Enemy on them before. But it's too late now. Okay, what else can you do? Held in my gaze, one AP. We can just kill another one. So I think I'm going to... Uh, we could hit that one back there. That's a Grenadier Guard. He's going to be throwing more grenades, I imagine. This is gonna freeze him in place, but I don't know. This not it doesn't uh, just immobilizes. I'd rather just kill something with, with one of these abilities. So let's kill this one, or we can kill the other one on her. I'm gonna kill the other one on her, just so that she can actually move. Duty demands. Yep, he's dead. And my turn. I'm gonna move right here. I'm ready for whatever comes. She's already forewarned. We're gonna forewarn Abelard now. It's as good as done. And we also have prescience. Um, plus four intelligence, perception, and fellowship and willpower. I think I'm gonna use prescience on Cassia. I'll see to so it's gonna buff up her skills a little bit. And uh, let's do bring it down. Argenta. Although we could, no, we can only do bring it down or voice of command. We just bring it down on her. Who, she can shoot, not me. so. Well, we will have her do exactly that. So this bolter won't kill in one hit. I find that hard to believe. None can escape Never mind. the Emperor's judgment. I spoke too soon. The Bolter can definitely kill. Then we can use Run and Gun and actually move her into something that looks like cover. I will be... bathe this battlefield in righteous fury. And then she's going to Bolter this guy and hopefully kill him too. Fucking beautiful. Look at him. Torso flying through these whatever they are. They look like beds. I think they, they probably are beds. That, that's rough. That is literally just a, a concrete slab or a metal slab. Who knows? But in any case, that guy's not going to have to worry about bad bed conditions anymore, because uh, he's now a torso. An exploded one at that. These guys are coming through. Oh, uh, they're going to be funneled into a breach here. You, here. you can go join your pal. Oh, he lived. What a tool. Um, <clears throat> what's this? Move closer for inspection? Not right now. We'll inspect that later. Oh, yeah, right. This guy's still alive. Attack of opportunity? Missed. Okay, so this one's fleeing. Interesting. What you doing there? We'll move Abelard up. I'm not going to charge him, because that's going to put him in a bad position. So what I'm going to do instead is use his uh, 
big old revolver here. We can shoot that one. Only 11% chance to hit. That is very small. So we'll shoot this one instead. Dead. All right. And endure. Back in the Done with it. Don't go out ahead. Let the enemies come to us. It seems like that's what they want to do. More prisoners coming in. They can't reach us, which is great. Okay, everybody's forewarned. Um, no sense in doing an analysis here, but I will drop another analysis Anything on that is? enemy. Because that one's going to be kind of tough to uh, take down. We'll leave that as is right now. And drop a sensory deprivation. This is going to immobilize. No, it's going to blind them. I'm going to do it on, on that one. It's a psychic power, so... Yep, you've been sensory deprived. Sucks to be you, pal. Not going to use that, so we're going to use psychic scream on that one. Was... Why not? Was that... oh. See ya. We'll make a nice pile of corpses right over there. What? Okay, Cassia, move up this way. Held in my gaze, we could just kill him with that. Can't target them. Needs to be in line of sight, of course. This doesn't... Like, it, it doesn't have any further cost, right? It's not affecting our veil degradation to do this. Not it's not a psychic power. You know, if I recall correctly, navigators were, like, OP in, uh, in Rogue Trader. Me? Uh, maybe not OP, Can but they were just like... Captain? They were really good. Which, I guess, translates to maybe they're OP, but whatever. Uh, can't use Bring It Down. Could use Bring It Down on him. I'm gonna hold off on that. There's no sense in using it right now. Um, he could, like, we could use it on him to get a pistol shot off, but I'd rather use it when he's in a position where we can actually, like... Taking calculated risk is my second nature. So, you're forewarned. We're not forewarned. So I'm going to forewarn myself. And I could also give myself prescience. Or I could give Adira prescience. Personally. Actually, it might be better, because he has more perception-based abilities. And, uh, bring it down. I'm going to cast... Can't cast it. Okay, so you can only be affected by it once per character. Or once, uh by the ability itself, so having multiple characters with the ability doesn't make it uh, more readily castable, so that's good to know. Uh, I'll make it happen. We'll use that. And uh, I guess I'll shoot that guy. Nope, can't can't do that. Guess I'll end my turn. So these guys, I don't know what you're doing. You're gonna throw another grenade over here. Nice, nice shot, I guess. You missed. Sucks to be you. Uh, 49%. Good advance. Gonna, gonna God advance. Emperor, move through me. Be the fire in my heart. This one's really tough. Why are you so tough? What are you wearing? You have 51 hit points. Passive ability. Horde of thugs. Okay. Well, we can run and gun again. To allow us to move up to here. I would like to shoot this grenadier. But I kinda wanna Rejoice get rid of this one. In battle. As the Emperor commands, I act. Yes. Okay. Uh um it's gonna cost two action points? No, three action points. We don't quite have enough. Unfortunate. Alright. He's coming. What are you doing? Oh, they're blind. That's why. Okay. Well, get apple arted. It will be done. Still alive. Very unfortunate. Victory is imminent. Endure. I think otherwise we're looking pretty good. I should have sworn enemy him again. I'm sorry. I, I'm getting used to uh, all these different characters. It's a more complex system than D and D, so you know that that has its uh, its drawbacks. Though, admittedly, I, I generally like the drawbacks. I like to have to learn how to use a character properly rather than just, you know, cycle through the same types of actions again. Um, or find the right, you know, the immediate right tool for the right thing. d d you know, with spellcasting and everything, it's it's much more complicated, but um, it's definitely, uh, y you have more to do. I have read tomes of military tactics. Yeah, we'll let Cassia kill him then. 
And since this is just an ability that she can use over and over again, and it does a fuck ton of damage. Why not? Um, okay. Not gonna use that. Voice of command. No one's available. Isn't we'll use that on Majira. Okay. End turn. I will advance as well. Let's make some opportunities. Everybody is forewarned. Not everybody is prescienced, though. I'll prescience myself. Who, if not me? So I can benefit from the stats granted. Voice of command. Can't voice of command myself. Damn it. <laughs> it's really all I can do here, so I'm just gonna end turn. I'm gonna kind of. Okay, this guy is really annoying. Didn't actually do very much. So I'm assuming I can shoot him through this door. If he can throw a grenade through this door, I can shoot him through this door. That is not the Emperor's will. That's a load of crap. Oh, I see. Never mind. It's not. That's actually sensible. Uh damn. I wish I could have seen that that was different. We're gonna dash. We can dash to uh here. I'll do it. Okay, only three, three spaces. Um, well, you still have some As extra stuff, Emperor so I'm gonna have a reload. Act. And turn. Abelard. Follow yeah. my knee. The only way we're gonna deal with this is by uh, getting around him. So we're gonna have to do that. Could do daring breach. No do it. matter the cost. So that's gonna get us right there. <laughs> I've seen worse battles than this in my time. Yeah, you have. This one's not that bad. We're gonna engage him in close combat. That's gonna be a hit. Uh, once again, I should have. I will do my duty. So bad. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Indeed. We'll do endure. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm gonna use this because I may as well use it in the combat. All right, Idira, go here, and then I think we should be able to psychic scream him. So first I'm gonna analyze him. According to my comprehensive analysis, this guy is a jerk. We're gonna expose his weakness. There's five stacks of that on him. And then we're gonna psychic scream him. <laughs> yep, he didn't like that. A little bit of veil degradation. A little bit of veil degradation never killed no one. Uh, if we go there, will we have you in our line of sight? Yes. Step aside. The navigator Perfect. is coming. As duty demands. See ya. So Cassia basically killed like almost everyone here. Um, she's scary. As it turns out. Well, let's loot these prisoners. What do you guys have? Oh, combat knives. Serrated knife, even. Interesting. And chainmail. All right. Uh, that's kind of cool. Didn't know. I like the the variation in the gear in this game. Keep your wits about you. Inspect the poster. That's gonna be a perception test. We got some goods here. Another one. Give this a quick read. <laughs> I swear the emperor hasn't forsaken me. Guess who just came down the shuttle gangway among the fresh batch of prisoners? Clenson Throne Damned Willia, former administratum clerk. No, the clerk. The very same scum who lost the writ about the missing payment. He's the reason I'm in this hole. Don't know, or don't know what they threw him in for, but I've never felt better in my life. He's not just behind the same bars as me. He's fresh meat, and I'm a venerable optimate, respected by everyone in the colony. The warden just came up with a new improvement from now on. Anyone who underperforms, misbehaves, or causes trouble in any other way is to be punished by the community, specifically by the local breast and brightest, yours truly, the Optimates. The last two sods who failed to meet the quota were stripped naked, whipped, and thrown into cages in the big barracks. That's where they were have... That's where they have to eat, sleep, and shit now with everyone watching. I thought <laughs> to myself then, that isn't right. They've taken these punishments too far, but now... Just you wait, you piece of grok shit. I'll get you for something. Those cages are calling your name. I mean, I do not approve of this, but I understand your sentiment. If some idiot fucking Always keep your eye on neglect the pulled this type of stuff. Okay, this has been, these cages have been placed in plain view of the beds. Ah, yeah, okay. Ugh, gross. Inspect the poster. 
You can restain the edges of this. You can tear it off. And see what's in there. Lots of loot. Improved auto pistol and a prisoner's shank. Okay. There's like slightly buffed up variants of different weapons too. That's really cool. And quite a bit of uh, hidden loot like that. Let's actually uh, equip some of our characters with new stuff. So I have the Ripper auto pistol here. I might take this improved auto pistol for myself, but maybe it's better I give it to somebody else. I gave her a ranged weapon. Like, it is useless to give her a ranged weapon. Her ranged weapon is that right up there. Um, I might give it to uh, a few instead. And the improved knife, where is that? That's this one. This is a serrated knife, and this is the prisoner's shank. So the, this has bleeding. Gives plus ten percent parry. Minus ten enemy weapon skill when hit. And the prisoner's shank just does a bit more damage. Um, does more damage than a sword. I refuse to believe that, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> sword does have cleave, but it's fine. For the psyker, I'm going to give her the uh, the knife. That is a big prisoner's shank. Just want to point that out. Serrated knife. I might take the serrated knife myself instead of a sword. Again, I, I don't think I'm going to be the type to get into close combat very often. But if I am in close combat, I'd like to be capable at it. Now, chainmail. This would give me a dodge penalty, but it's a pretty significant armor bonus. But it doesn't look cool. I'll keep the armor body glove on myself. What about on you? I guess we can give it to her. That looks all right on her. That actually looks pretty good. So she had a uh, mesh chest plate. I could take the mesh chest plate. It just doesn't look cool. You, armored body glove, what's your dodge chance? Uh, 60%. Okay, she's... Does everyone have 60 yeah, it seems like almost everyone has 60. You only have 52, because you have a reduction. Because you have 15% armor. So this would increase the armor to 25, reduce this. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't think it is. Keep your uh, keep your usual stuff. Plus, it just looks a whole lot better. Um, I'm not a fan of how the uh, mesh chest plate looks. So... We won't be equipping that. Last pistol. Yeah, all of this stuff was the uh, the basic items that we had, which we don't really need on anybody. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear beds made from metal sheets swing back and forth on rusted chains. Whoever is forced to sleep on them, it would not take much for one of them to fall. Oh, God. Yeah, these conditions are horrible. The beds here are bolted to the floor. Some have thin, torn bed sheets and even tattered pillows. God, imagine, like, the smell. If you have the people here in the cages that are, like, shitting in the... Yeah. It's, uh... Gotta be pretty I rough. always keep my options open. Grenadier guard. We got a flak chest plate. Okay. Force grenade. I'll take that. And a stub revolver. Okay, so the flak chest plate is not as good as the mess chest plate, so we don't need that. But, force grenade. That's something. We're gonna give that to... Sister Argenta. Oops. Not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's get everybody going up here. Actually, what, what does it say here? Is there something you wish to tell me about? Namely, the mess in the wardroom last week. Ugh, stop blaming me every time one of the officers flies off the handle, old man. Not every brawl or disaster on this ship is because of me. <laughs> okay. What did this say? The beds here are bolted to the floor. Some even have thin, torn bed sheets and even tattered pillows. So I guess this is for uh, the higher ranking, the optimates. If these. What about? Uh... doesn't look particularly good. In fact, 
I would go out of my way to say that this looks kind of bad. Well, better do some looting. Prison guard key. That might be useful. Uh, what else do we got here? Just ignore that. The chopped up slabs of flesh have been thoroughly washed of any blood. We can do a lore warp, that'll be me. Failure. It's just Mis a temporary setback. Oh shit, we didn't actually succeed. We got on 75%. Okay, mysterious image. I don't actually recognize that, but I reckon it's probably Zinchian. Judging by the waviness and the eye. I always have a backup plan. Eight pointed, that's for sure. Is it actually? No. It's nine pointed. Yeah, Zinchian. Um to me, look at that. Separate human body parts. Yeah, it, it does look like that, doesn't it? Yeah, Auntie Sean, here we go. Looks like things aren't so good anymore. I'm scared. I shouldn't have known all that charity from the warden was going to bring nothing but trouble. No noble, no matter how balmy, would pull anything of the sort. But that man, it started with the little things. The warden would ask to... Uh, the warden would come by to talk, as he did. Except he used to ask us questions before. And now he was mostly gushing sermons, some gibberish about the path, the purgation, the sanctity of sacrifice, seeing with blinded eyes. I listened and nodded. Yes, Master Warden. Of course, Master Warden. He could say whatever rubbish he wanted, as long as the tasty, optimate meals kept coming. I thought everyone else was doing the same, nodding just to please the big man. I was wrong. After that, people in the barracks started yapping about, on about purgation and blindness too. Apparently us optimates were no longer just the Warden's favorite. We were, Emperor, forgive me, prophets of some kind who were meant to serve or to save the rest of the sorry lot or awaken them or make them see some rubbish along those lines people were now supposed to make sacrifices to the optimates yesterday the sap who slept in the bed under me in my first year here cut off his own damned ear and scrawled on his knees towards me crawled on his knees towards me he handed me the ear and begged me not to forsake him when the fateful hour came what in the throne am i supposed to do with an ear why is everyone every single one staring at me all the time the warden said the time was nigh that fate had truly great things in store for the optimates i went to look how my old friend clenson was doing he hadn't spoken for three months ever since i had all his teeth top teeth ripped out he spoke today he looked straight at me and said dead man i kept hitting him until it hurt until it hurt me now my fist and feet are all bruised half the barracks stood there and watched and prayed. I'm scared. <laughs> so, doesn't sound good, mate. <laughs> Let's add these to cargo. No sense in keeping them around. Uh, we can add these to cargo. That. All these knives. I don't think we need knives. Don't think we need this either. Or the scrappy auto pistols. Just gonna add these to cargo. Alright. Good stuff. Yep, this looks like a right proper mess. Uh... Bunch of bodies, all mutilated. Is there Going money to a be made? Pile. Uh, yep. Seems, seems, seems great. Judging by the number of horrid morsels, dozens of victims were slain here. Yep. The execution chamber. Cool. Uh, yeah. Just some wholesome prison activity. Nothing, nothing wrong here. We'll go in here. What do we got? Well, it looks like we can. Nothing's to impossible this. for this old officer. No, apparently not. We'll Rise head here. to the top, or get left in the dust. Oh, good. My brethren, the dawn is nigh. The optimates will guide us into a new existence. The dawn, huh? Oh yeah. Yes, dear brethren, have a taste of my steel. Oh, how I have longed for this, my dear brethren. Why do you keep calling somebody? Are you talking to us when you say... I see. Thank the throne, normal-looking faces. We thought we were going to die here with these nutters. The old man with a gap-toothed smile drops his weapon and holds out his hands in a placating gesture. Please don't shoot us, your nobleness. Let us speak a word. All right, they were... Ah, I get it. Well, this is a welcome change, talking before shooting. Still, Lord Captain, the look of this ragtag bunch hardly inspires trust. Give me a reason not to execute you on the spot. Here's the deal. We're honest, quiet inmates. We didn't want to riot, but, well, sitting it out wasn't really an option either. The Warden's lapdogs made short work of those who refused to join in the festivities, so we had to, you know, play along. But that's what it all was. Play. 
We never meant no offense to the god Medina, nor the lawful authority of House Winterscale. Give us a chance, eh? We just want to wait out until everything blows over, then we can go back into our cells and quietly do the rest of our time. A repentant, honest heretic. How novel. Judging by Abelard's tone, the Seneschal is tr utterly unimpressed by the old man's ingratiating monologue. The lowborn's speech is mottled with colors that conceal his true, darker hues. The old man has a long history of lies, and he is using his wiles on us as well. But I see no foul corruption or ill intent in his words. Tell me more about the Warden and the Riot. Huh? Why soil your tongue talking about that heretic? Well, if you insist, here's how it is. The Warden of this prison, or the Warden of this here prison, the Honorable Master Casteglia, was a crackpot from the start. The previous Warden ran things the proper way. Prayer, one meal a day, work, a punch in the chompers from the guards, work again. But the new one, do you know what his first decree was? He introduced lunches and dinners. By the nine devils, that's three meals a day. The man was obviously stock raving mad. <laughs> Things went downhill from there. The guards quit it with the teeth punching. The warden forbade them. Instead, the overseers started counting which prisoners were digging up more things in the quarry, swinging their pickaxes harder or whatnot. And then, would you believe it? They put together a list of the best workers. And if someone on that list also showed good behavior, that's when they were promoted to an optimate. That's the upper crust among us jailbirds. Or, that's how it was at first. Then the warden decided it's the optimates, not the guards, who should be in charge of punishments, and that it wasn't the overseer's job to watch the prisoners work. It was the optimates's. Well, let me tell you, that's when those goody two-shoes really started to shine. The guards aren't even in the same league as our dear fellows, the optimates. In the old days, we had maybe five or ten stiffs kickings a week, and now we're lucky if it's not over fifty. And that wasn't the end of it. Warden Casteglia moved out of his chambers to live right in the quarry, under the dome. And I think something in his new home really scrambled his brain. He began spouting the wildest things like the optimists are saints and who will behold the truth. And he started taking them to the quarry. Not all of them returned. The ones who did, you wouldn't recognize them. More beasts than human. They were butchering people left and right. Even guards and overseers. The warden himself had armed them. And that's the whole sob story. But I knew it from the moment he let us have dinners. Oh, this won't end well. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like he found something in the quarry. And that something may have, uh... Spoken to him. Indira nods knowingly. The old Padre's right. Whenever the nobles start giving hand out to the commoners, there's... Something always goes wrong. She notices your look and catches herself. I mean, that with all due respect, your ladyship. No intents or no offense intended. Very well, I shall spare you. Oh, that's so great to hear, your nobleness. Just great. Now, there's a true aristocrat, not that warden creep. Now then, your nobleness, where was I? Have you ever set foot on Footfall Station? There's this district there, the Shadow Quarters. It's called that because it's located behind the statue of the Holiest Emperor. I've known folks who called it something else. Also, on account of it being behind the statue, don't repeat their mistakes, I tell you. Reverend Hieronymus wasted no time in finding and burning them all. Forgive an old man for getting distracted, so, footfall, the shadow quarters, there's a bar up there, built into the remains of an old ship, and in that bar, in the back room, a certain Riza does her business. Tell her Grandpa Backfowl says hello, you'll be her favorite client in the blink of an eye. There we are. Well, your nobleness, we'll be going now if you don't mind. I think I'm going to do this. Uh, ooh, this is dangerous, though. Do we just let him go? I think I'm going to do a, the Iconoclast option. I shall not leave you here to die at the hands of the Warden's henchmen. Go, tell my pilot that it is the Lord Captain's order that you be sent to my ship. You will join my crew. You have my personal pardon as a rogue traitor. Uh, thanks. We're most grateful, your nobleness. The old man glances at you somewhat skeptically, then smiles and leaves. Alright. I, I think they're legit. Might be a bit tainted, but give them the chance to repent. Let's open this. Unexpected result. Damn, that's a lot of stuff. 
Last gun, axe. Got some uh, vision cores, omniscopes, thermoplas. Yeah, lots, lots of goods. We have a ton of cargo. Um, got these dead prisoners here. This will loot them. Stuff, some auto pistols. These are going to go into cargo as well. And uh, we can head into here. We can demolish this door. We need a melted charge to do it. Uh, I, as it so happens, still have a melted charge. Although, maybe we don't. Prevails. Boom. Keep um, your wits about you. What do we have in this here? This ocular implant was a worthwhile investment. So that ocular implant found this. Diviner staff, huh? Okay. Uh, oh. This offers a different ability. Very cool. Gas cloud grenade, Medicaid. I'm taking all of that. And I'm going to equip the diviner staff myself. Because as it so turns out, I'm a diviner. So, I'll be taking that. It looks different. That looks really cool. The, uh, the eye. So, instead of the warp lightning, we get consign. And also get access to a heroic act consign and a desperate measure consign. The wielder of the staff gains the consign ability. This ability is also available in its desperate or a heroic act in desperate measures form. I want to see what it does. Can't see what it does. Cool. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. Grenades. Gas cloud grenade, that's going to you. Medicaid, uh, who's our, our best Medicaid character? It's it's you as well, isn't it? Oh, I guess you're getting that as well. Okay. To the main level. More goods first. Cloak. Saturated cape. Whenever the character uses Endure, they immediately remove one of the burning poison or bleed effects they have. That's fucking cool. Foe hammer. Uh, this is just a bigger revolver. And a weapon from the uh, old Dark Heresy game, which is very cool. So, he uses Endure. What cape do you currently have? You have... Each heroic act used in battle increases the wearer's dodge by 20%. Okay, so we need to give this to an Iconoclast character. So I'm going to give you the Foe Hammer, I think. You have a Deadshot Revolver. This does a little bit less damage. Well, no, it's, it's more reliable damage. Less armor penetration. Um, range 3. Really close range. No additional hit chance. It's not as good. I'm going to keep you with the Deadshot Revolver. Who will we give the Foe Hammer to? I think maybe I'll take the Foe Hammer. No, I'm taking the one that just allows me to spray and pray because my ballistic skill is bad. <laughs> Do we hold on to it? Or we give it to her? I'll give it to her. She can take it. Instead of her other weapon. And the Endure thing is definitely going to Abelard because he's using Endure all the time. And that's still a cape. And he can use a cape. Meanwhile, um, so we need an Iconoclast character. I guess that's me. I'm an Iconoclast. I'll take the cape. Why the hell not? Okay, good find. Lots of good finds here. I like it. Exploration is actually rewarded quite nicely. And I think we got most of what we need here. Right? We've been there. That's where we did the fighting. Came in through there. There's that chamber. Hold on. Let's quickly go back. I don't want to leave this place just yet. I feel like we may have missed something back here. Yeah, like this. It doesn't seem like we can actually interact with this room. Let us not It looks like we should be able to, though. Perhaps we failed a uh, reception check? Oh, we did, we did. Oh, good's here. Missed this. More gas cloud grenades, more knives, shipments of glow sticks, all kinds of stuff. Good thing we uh, found all of that. We can give her another gas cloud grenade. What do they do? Okay, it does toxin damage. Makes sense. And we'll give one to uh, Abelard as well. Because why the hell not? Alright. I always have a backup plan. Again, check through. Seems like everything else here is done. We've been out that way. There wasn't much to be found in this room, so we're going to head to the main level. Here we are. Um, 
The dead guard did not even have time to draw a weapon. The attack must have come as a surprise. Corpse of a uniform decorated with a winter scale coat of arms. Okay, that's going to be to the open pit. Always keep go there your eye on yet. the prize. Um, whatever that is looks a bit concerning. There's all kinds of stuff down there, so we'll be uh, having a look here. This is a cool area. There's actually some 3D... Uh, you can build a bridge, aka knock this over. Didn't want to. <laughs> okay. Uh, pick that lock. Experience. Nice. Nothing matters Worked. more. So we can get into the warden's office right now. Let's see here. What might we find? Thus far, nothing, which is unusual. These are the nice. Is beds. there money to be made? Pumps of dust, but no trace of weapons or gear. The storage has not been used in some time. Indeed, he did abandon it, after all. This will be back to the main level. This will be... Oh, this is... Wait, we're just here again. Huh. Yeah, of course. There's multiple entrances or exits out of here, so that makes sense. We didn't really need to open that, then. That was just Keep your wits out. about you. Well. So be it. We'll get out that way. Um, so that was to the warden's office. This is going to be to the barracks. So this is probably also going to be, like, inside the, uh, the main place right here. I would think. I always keep my options open. Yeah, yeah. So this is right here at the beginning. Correct? Hmm. Now this looks a bit different, again. That is where we came through. This place is a bit of a maze. A little bit confusing. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. Yeah, we'll just head back out again. I don't think there's anything more for us to do inside there. Okay, well, we've made a bridge across. That's the barracks. Oh, that's the pilot. Let us there's not something... dawdle. Yeah, there was that trap that was there. Goods. Totally missed this. There's a lot more to explore here, and we're going to explore it, but we're going to explore it in the next episode, because I think this one has gone on for quite a while. Uh, I don't even I know how long, because I break this recording up, so my current time uh, is not uh, registered on there. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. We have begun our explanation here, exploration here of this prison moon, and things do not seem to have gone well here. So, hopefully we Always can find out what happened prize. and uh, deal with the warden. Clearly, he's... Uh, He's lost his marbles and might need a uh, bolt round to the head. And uh, I think we'll let Argenta do that if we get the chance. Seems like something she would enjoy. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find the uh, the winter scale scion, Evain, and uh, rescue him. Because he seems like a decent fellow, actually. Which, uh, you know, is a rarity in the Imperium. Perhaps a potential ally for us later down the line, in case we... Uh, go against his father, because he seems to have sentiments that do not align with the rest of the Winterscale dynasty. Might be that we can, uh, forge a pact with the rogue Winterscales if it comes to a conflict with that dynasty, which I imagine it probably will. So, drop this video a like if you have enjoyed it, and we will continue on soon enough. Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna be releasing these probably, like, every other day at this point, because I am <laughs> doing a lot of recordings of this. So, uh, yep. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. Ash Arder out.